It's an island by many names. Bird Island by locals. Sundown Island by some. This is in the top three of biggest, bestest of the rookeries in Texas. I always like birds. It's fun to come out here, see what's going on. But to those who ever met Chester Smith, who dedicated his life to watching over these birds, this is Chester Island. This island used to be 100 acres. Uh, right now it's sitting at 65. And we're losing, depending on which side of the island, we lose as much as 30 feet uh, during a year uh, because of storms, because of ship wake, and you can actually see a ship coming now. Over the last several years, Sundown Island continues to erode away. And that's bad news for these birds, the birds that use this island every year to nest. Sundown came to be in 1962. While building the Matagorda ship channel, all the extra sand and sediment called dredge spoil was molded into this island. It turned into one of the best rookeries or bird nurseries along the Texas coast. For miles around, miles and miles around, this is the only game in town. All those birds that feed and live in that area come to this one island and that's their nursery, that's their home, that's where they're making babies and, and raising families. That's a pelican nest with only two eggs. For 25 years, Chester Smith worked for the National Audubon Society as a watcher of sorts, a caretaker for the birds. I have a lot of birds that are beautiful when they're in their mating colors. So one of my favorite is Reddy Secret. Reddy Secret is on the threaten list. Chester passed away back in 2011 and left behind a thriving rookery island. But it's now in need of some attention. Yeah, we like to come out and make sure, kind of keep an eye on the erosion throughout the year. We know we don't like to be out here during nesting season, so we keep that to a minimum. This erosion is pretty substantial. We're looking at about 15, 20 feet, you know, a cliff of about 15, 20 feet. And just above that, you've got birds nesting. Uh, so next year, this area may not be here anymore to provide nesting habitat for those birds. It shouldn't be like that. Sundown Island hosts 18 species of colonial water birds. That's everything from brown pelicans to laughing gulls. But more importantly, species of conservation concern like black skimmer, reddish egret. It's got white ibis. It's impressive the diversity on this island. And that's why it's important for us to also create diverse habitat on this island where we can. You can see that in this area, there's still some bare ground spots, which end up being great habitat for terns. Once it starts to get like these sunflowers on the perimeter, it's too vegetated for those birds to use. They like bare ground, ideally. That only happens when we get dredge spoil. And who helps make sure sundown gets that much needed sand? It's still in the family. Chester's daughter, Peggy, and her husband, Tim, now keep an eye on sundown. Chester's footprints uh, are, are pretty big, and it's really special to be able to come out and walk the same trails that, that he walked for 25 years. Here's some beautiful great egret chicks. You can tell they're great egrets because they have a yellow beak and have green eyeshadow. I tell Peggy that uh, you know you walk around the corner and you can just imagine still Chester coming around and meeting you there and, and getting you to work on a project. This latest project, a massive dredge, is pumping tons and tons of sand out to sundown. It's about 16,000 feet altogether discharge line from here to Sundown Island. This is a win-win. The dredge is here to maintain and deepen the ship channel 
while sundown gets the same. Get the cutters down on the bottom, we're digging the material. We're getting about 20,000 gallons a minute. We pump water and sand mixed together. This material is looking really, really good. Even with it being as wet as it is, you could walk right out and stand on it, which is an indication of just fantastic dredge material. Andrew Smith from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has been helping to replenish Sundown's shores for decades. Come on, Jester, let's look at this pipe. We've been able to use maintenance material to come out and again start to, to re-nourish Sundown Island. Uh, and, and this particular job is one where we're going to put more material on sundown than we have in the last 10 years at least. Everything looks great. It's real easy to imagine here in a month or two uh, a lot of terns and other you know, ground nesting birds looking at all this and thinking that it looks really good. That is stacking. We're building quite a bit of island. The material is very firm even all the way to the water line so, so I think it looks fantastic. And in a way, it seems like Chester's still here. That is stacking up like I like it. Probably the bigger reason why we're standing out in this part of the bay and, and on this island is absolutely because of Chester and his dedication to the island. There's no doubt that we want to do as much as we can to preserve and protect this and enhance this. Look at the booms on that great eagle. Isn't that beautiful? Those two there, look at that. And as for the birds that rely on sundown, it looks like Chester's vision is alive and well. I feel like his spirit's still here in a way. It says Coon Bill on his nest now. So it is a special place to us beyond just the birds. It's, it's all that time that Chester invested to make this a uh, special place. It warms my heart to see this kind of work because it's, it's very easy to imagine him looking down on us and thinking, y'all are doing great. You're doing a great job. It's, it's a beautiful thing. This project was funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife Restoration Program.